Welcome to tutorial number 3. In this tutorial we are going to learn how we can use image files to drive any CGA parameter for the building generation. Now what is a parameter? Let me generate this building and we see that it is extruded to a specific height. This height is actually defined as an attribute so I can really go in and edit this value. The default is 80, defined in the rule file, as we see here, 80 meters. So let me quickly go back to the default. Now it could be tedious since all of the buildings in the whole scene may have a different value. I don't want to go in and edit all the, all the values of all the, all the different buildings just because the default is here set to 80. I could now go in obviously and define this um, as a random value between, for example, 30 meters and 120 meters and regenerate all the models with Control F5 but nevertheless this may not be very realistic. So let's find out how we can use a, an image file to actually drive all these um, building heights much better and much more intuitive. So let's go in and create a new map layer. Layer, new map layer of the type mapping. Let's go and uh, let's go and load in uh, a different image for this and in this case we are using the skyline map. Now you see there's a black image with some red parts which I'm going to use. So let me edit uh, edit this to 3000 and 3000, the same extent as the terrain which we are already using. And now here I am going to right click into the, into this, onto this canvas here and add a new row. And I'm actually going to use the red channel, so this is fine. So let me name this. This is the, uh, let's say, skyline value. Now, since, since we want to put all the building heights in a certain range, I'm going to choose a minimum value here, which is 80, and a maximum value, which is 200. So let's say finish. And behind we see it, this layer has been generated. So let me quickly hide the terrain here. And there we are. Now select, let's select this layer again, it is called mapping and let's name this guy skyline map layer. Okay. Now down here you see the CGA attribute which we have just created before. Skyline value sampling the map 01 in the red, uh, in the red channel and mapping the values between 18 80 and 200. Now let's go in and select all of these shapes here and drive the height for all of these buildings in another way. Let's not use the rule, the rule value or a manually set user defined value. Let's use the connection editor and actually go and grab the skyline map layer and the attribute which we just defined, the skyline value. Now the connection is created and all of these buildings now grab the information from the underlying map. So let us generate all of those buildings and now it should be it should become clear that all of the buildings which are in the red in the red area are much higher than the buildings in the other areas. In this second part of the tutorial we are talking about how we can control land use types with map layers. So when you open the fourth scene of the third tutorial, the map control tutorial 04 file, then you find this scene here which is showing some colorized models. This is actually representing 
the three land use types in just a color variation. So we have the red buildings, the green buildings and the bluish buildings. So let's explore how this was done. So let us hide all the layers here. There is a land use map and you see here it is just simply a colored image so there's some red, green and blue colors and in the layer attributes of this specific land use map layer there are three attributes defined the T industrial, the T residential and the T commercial. So this has to do with the land use obviously. Now for the industrial land use it seems that the red channel of this image file is, um, is sampled and put into the range between 0 and 1. The same happens for the residential land use on the green and the commercial on the blue channel. Now all of this information is piped into the rule file which then actually generates all of the buildings and colorizes the buildings according to this land use. So let's dive into the rule and actually try to find out how the colorizing is actually handled. Now here we have the code um, which shows all of this um, behavior. We have the land use attributes which were initialized with the default value of zero. Then we have the color declarations red, green, blue and the else case which is white and then we have the actual land use type color. In this case what we are doing is we are testing some things. In this case if the industrial color is larger than the commercial color or basically the value which was sampled and the industrial color is larger than the res residential color then we make red and the red is, as we have seen before, industrial. Now, the same thing is checked for commercial. Obviously, if commercial is has a higher value than anything else, we visualize the stuff blue, and the same happens for the residential areas, which are then distributed, or which are producing green buildings. Now this is just one way how we can um, distribute land uses or distribute one type of parameter with color maps. Obviously you can compare any value with any other value or map any sort of image to any CJ attribute. Now mapping parameters with image files that way can obviously create many many variations with a large amount of control. So with just a few input images you can drive almost all the parameters like distributions, building heights, colors, uh, you could even drive window widths or, um, or drive the distribution of trees or uh, tree densities and so on and so on. So map layers are really a very very powerful tool in City Engine.